If you're feeling stuck doing small, low value orders as a florist and wondering what is it that everybody else knows that you don't that allows them to consistently and seemingly effortlessly attract those high value dreamy orders to their business. And if you feel like you're spinning your wheels, throwing everything you can think of at your social media and your website, you feel like you're doing all the work, but it's just not attracting the dream customers that you want. My friend, you are not alone. This has got to be one of the biggest frustrations for so many ambitious, motivated, driven florists. And I'll be the first to tell you, I have been exactly there. When I first started my business, I truly thought that this was a design competition, that whoever was the best designer would be the one that could attract all of the dreamy, high value, big profit orders to their business. And it took me about three years of banging my head against the wall before I realized that that wasn't the actual secret to getting noticed by the good clients. And then I realized when it comes to finding the profitable customers, this is way more to do than just being a good designer. It had so much more to do with how I positioned our business in the eyes of our clients, the actual marketing tactics that we implemented, and who it was that we were trying to connect with and reach and attract in to our business. Business. So if you're feeling like you are completely overwhelmed by everything that your competition is doing and you're struggling to consistently attract those high value, big profit customers that you've been dreaming of, it has nothing to do with your floral design skills. All you need to know is the right strategy to follow and this one secret when it comes to getting noticed by the good customers and the ones that will pay the premium price without questioning your markups. If you're new to this space, my my name is Kathleen and I am a woman on a mission to make it easier than ever for you to be successful, attract dream clients to your business, increase your profitability and make more money doing the work that you love. And I vividly remember that tug of war, that extreme frustration of being in my business and having clients stand there and give you that facial expression when you suggest that they spend $100, let alone $110. And they were like, oh, I only wanted to spend like 30. I'm like, this is not how you're going to be profitable as a business owner. We all know the value of being able to consistently attract higher value orders into your business because in very practical terms, it takes just as long to make a $200 bouquet as it does to make a $60, $80 or $100 bouquet which means you get to maximize your hours, maximize your labor, maximize your staff, or maximize your own time because the actual time to make the work happen is exactly the same. But even better than that is that you get to go through your product even faster, which has such a ripple effect on your profitability. So one of the best decisions that we made was making an intentional shift in our strategy to very much focus on increasing our average order value. And at one point in time, our average order value was $54. <laughs> that is a lot of transactions for you to go through in order to hit that 10k a week revenue mark. It's a lot of slinging flowers, it's a lot more hard goods and sundries to go through, you need a lot more hands to be able to work through that many orders, versus the idea of like, what would your business look like if your average order value was $154 or $254? And I want to walk you through that exact strategy today because this is so incredibly helpful. When the goal is more profit, more money, a faster path to success. And the first thing to remember is that none of this happens by chance. This isn't about luck. This isn't about the stars aligning. This is about making a very intentional shift in your strategy. And so much of this work is about you putting yourself in the driver's seat of your business. Because I spent so long feeling like I was the backseat driver in my business, stuck in reactive mode, feeling the pressure to say yes to everything that was happening in front of me. But the resentment and the frustration and the literal not making money experience was so real and so in my face. And I walked around for a really long time wanting somebody to come in and save me. So please learn from my experience and just take my first little bit of guidance to be like, you don't need somebody else to come in and save you. You can save yourself. 
and save yourself with this exact strategy because this is the process I want you to go through. If your goal is to increase the average order value in your business and to increase your profitability as a florist. And this is a super simple strategy that you can actually implement today. This isn't one of those I need to sit down and come up with a perfect plan and go out and re-photograph every single thing that's happened in my world. This is like, I want you to take note. I want you to write all this stuff down. I want you to go through this step-by-step -step process today. <laughs> Not, oh, I'll do this on Tuesday or maybe the beginning of next year. Mm -mm. You are going to get to work and you are going to do this today because it's going to have such an incredible impact on the profitability in your business. And you're going to love the work you're going to get asked to create and you're going to feel so much more empowered and in control and confident and capable, which is the entire point of being a flower boss. And the real secret here, the step that I don't want you to overlook when it comes to attracting dream clients as a florist, the real secret to your success is I want you to take control. Because if you want to attract high value clients to your business, you need to look like a high value business and you need to put out into the world the kind of work that you want to be asked to create. So everything that's on your website, your social media content needs to ooze premium. It needs to demonstrate your quality and expertise so that you can become a complete magnet for your dream client. So your branding, your portfolio, your messaging all needs to align with what matters most to that dream client of yours. And the thing that's really helpful to remember is that high quality clients, the better profitability customers value expertise and quality. They are looking at so much more than just the flowers in your hand because they're looking at the whole service that you offer from the online ordering experience on your website to the confirmation of delivery to the custom card message to the care and packaging of the final design they are looking at every single piece of the puzzle in the entire ordering process and the entire service that you provide. And of course, the flowers are an integral part of that, but it's not everything. And that mindset shift was so powerful for me because it's the thing that makes it so easy for you to stand apart from the competition. And it's the thing that's going to attract those high value, high profit customers to your business. So the real secret to making this happen is that the change starts with you. This is one of those like do the inside work and then allow the outside of your business to reflect that growth. And here's six very practical, easy to implement things you can do very specifically in line with the goal of increasing your average order value and making it easy for your dream clients to know that you're the florist for them. Number one, speak to your customer's needs, not your needs. Too many florists make the mistake of showcasing and talking about their qualifications and their expertise, but they miss the mark in terms of connecting it or making it relevant to their customer. And I remember sitting down and thinking this through for myself because as the person who has like all the qualifications and finally put in the work and invested in all of the design workshops, I was like, okay, so how is this actually relevant to my customer? Because my customers don't give a rat's ass if I have a piece of paper or I don't have a piece of paper. Nobody has ever asked me, not a single customer has ever asked me, hey, how many years have you been at work? Work, doing this work. It's like never happened. And that's when I really started to realize like when you can flip the entire experience on its head and position your expertise, your care, your know-how, your passion for this work in a way that's relevant to your customer, they're going to fall in love with you and be like, oh my gosh, I feel so safe. I feel so secure. I know that I can trust this florist to do the job. And here's just one example in terms of how you could bring this to life in your business. If you work with local growers, local sourced ingredients, one of the biggest benefits of doing that work and doing the extra sweat equity to build those relationships is it means that your customers get access to some of the freshest flowers around. They haven't been flown halfway around the world. They haven't been picked 72 hours ago. They haven't been left out of water for 48 hours just to get into your shop. Instead, they literally were picked that morning from the local grower. So talk about that benefit to your customer because the benefit of fresh flowers means it's going to last longer for the recipient. And that is one of the secrets to attracting high quality customers. So think about the things that you really care about in your business, the things that make you feel really proud of the work that you create and find a way to tell the story so that it's relevant to your customer. Flip the script, flip your perspective, and all of a sudden you'll be like, oh my gosh, I totally get how all of these pieces fit together. Number two, master a simple sales process. Now this is the 
reason why I will never stop talking about getting your website doing the work for you. Because your dream client probably doesn't even live in your local area, but instead they want to send flowers to somebody in your local area. And this is what becomes so clear when you can get out of your shoes and put yourself in your customer's shoes and learn and master the skill of thinking like your customer. Because let's say, for example, you're a florist in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to hypothesize that your ideal client actually lives in California. With the time difference, with that person's busy schedule, they're not going to remember, oh right, your shop is open from 8 until 4, but you're three hours ahead or two hours ahead or some number of hours of ahead of California. <laughs> and they're like, oh no, I want to be able to order on my phone 24 hours a day and understand how this whole process works. And I want to be able to spend 200, 300, $400. That's what your customer is thinking. So you need to build your sales process with that person in mind. It's a very customer centric approach. And this is what makes sales so simple as a florist is when you build your sales process so that it's in line with what matters to your clients. It's the easiest way to wake up to an overflowing inbox of dream customer orders. So your premium clients are going to be valuing things like ease of ordering, the overall user experience on your website. How quickly can I go from landing on, let's say your homepage or your primary delivery page to the actual final payment page? They don't want to have to jump through hoops. They don't want to have to scroll through epic long terms and conditions. They want to go from, hey, I found a florist in Atlanta, Georgia. I want to look through six to eight products. Amazing. Here's one for 250 bucks. Custom card message. Yes, I want to add on a vase. Here's the delivery instructions, delivery date, recipient details, phone number. Thanks so much. Pay here. They are valuing that entire experience, knowing part of what they're paying for is obviously the flowers and the expertise and the design skills. But in their mind, just as important is the reassurance that you are going to take care of their order. You're going to make them look good. You've offered them a premium sales process and a premium checkout experience, and you've made it easy for them to spend $200. $300. On the surface of it, I totally devalued all of those things early on in my business, but it wasn't until I really learned to master the sales process and sell like a boss that I was like, oh wait, this game, this game gets to be so simple and so easy, which then leads me to number three, which is the thing I will also never not stop talking about, which is confidence in your pricing, but confidence in your profitability. If you are not confident in your markups and your profitability, your customers will be able to tell and they'll be able to tell even if they live in California and you're based in Atlanta. Because those high value clients aren't looking for a bargain. They want to pay for quality and expertise. They want to invest in a premium experience. So pricing with premium profitability in mind is one of the integral pieces to actually attracting those dream clients because they don't want cheap. And in actual fact, cheap prices are the fastest way to repel your premium ideal dream clients. So just have one of those moments of a complete gut check and go, hey, am I really solid in my approach to pricing? Am I just following the formulas that Kathleen is using? Am I just pretending like Kathleen is my boss in my head office? All of those shortcuts work really well. <laughs> or am I allowing my self-doubt, my imposter syndrome, my fear, my scarcity to get in the way? And am I pricing from an emotion? I'll leave a link to my profitable pricing guide if you're on a mission to fast track your growth, because getting your pricing nailed down is one of the single most important ingredients when it comes to you increasing your profitability. And it's not just pricing and marking up your flowers the right way, but making sure you're marking up your sundries and your hard goods with a healthy profit, making sure you're marking up your labor, delivery, setup, pack down, all of the added extras that we have in our business are the difference between you being I mean, I guess it's okay. I'm making okay money and holy crap, look at how fast my bank account is increasing. And it all just begins with getting your pricing dialed in. Keep coming back and checking in with yourself to make sure that you are truly pricing from a clean place and you're pricing with confidence and profitability top of mind. So once you've had that gut check around your pricing and you're like, I know with every single thing in my business, it's going to be hugely profitable. Then we move on to number four, learn to sell your expertise and care and stop obsessing so much about the flowers. 
dollars and i know i've said this before but those high value clients value so much more than the specific stems that are in a design because they're actually looking at the whole picture and clients who are paying 250 300 400 dollars for a bouquet or a flower delivery are looking at the entire service that you're providing because they're buying trust they're buying expertise they're buying the entire shopping step-by-step -step process and sales experience that you've walked them through and they're also buying the emotional connection or the brand that you've set up for your business. So if you've ever looked at an order or you've ever had that moment, which we've all had as designers, where you're making a $300 arrangement and you've done the math, you've got your stem count out, and then you're looking at it going like, but does it look to value? And that is a very myopic view. And I had to unlearn that perspective. And this is one of those like shifting into flower boss mode and out of floral designer mode, because the pricing model that so many of us follow are based on specific stem count. But what happens if you don't use all the lilies? What happens if you decide the white lilac shouldn't be in the bouquet? The thing is still to value. <laughs> because the value is actually defined by the entire experience and what you offer your customers. The fact that they've ordered from you is valuable to the customer already, even before you've delivered the flowers. The fact that you're sending a delivery email confirmation is valuable to the customers, even though that has nothing to do with the stems in your hand. So take that 10,000 foot view and learn to sell yourself on the value of the full service that you offer from the minute a customer finds out about you to the minute that you send that delivery confirmation email and all of a sudden you won't get so stressed out and start strangling your flowers when they're in your hand and you're like oh but this bouquet is good enough without that extra lily stem this white lilac isn't actually going to add anything to the design and it's probably going to detract because even that basic design principle of if in doubt leave it out actually adds to the valuable experience for your customers but this requires such a shift in your perspective and learning okay i'm going to sell my expertise care and quality quality and not be so obsessed with the stem counts. And then number five, this is a shift in creating more strategic content. Because we all know it's not enough to just be posting pretty pictures to Instagram and magically and miraculously hope that the right customers, the good customers, the high profit customers just magically manifest themselves out of thin air. High value, big budget, big profit clients are very intentional with their decisions. And your marketing needs to align with their intentions and the things that they care about the most. So this is all about looking at your marketing content and focusing on a strategy that puts your brand and your business in front of the right customers with the right message. So here's a very real and practical example. If your dream is to have an average order value of let's say $200, go and look at your Instagram content and go and look at the posts and the images that you have on your website and ask yourself, how many of these designs are for $200? $200 or more. When I went and did this exercise, it became so exciting to me because all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, it makes sense. If I'm posting pictures of $60 bouquets, then everybody's just going to keep ordering $60 bouquets. But if you're posting pictures of $400, $300, $250 arrangements, then they're going to get a really good sense of the fact that, oh, this is the kind of work that you put out of your business consistently. So they're going to come and be like, oh my gosh, I saw that thing that you posted on April 14th. How much is it? I want one. <laughs> This is what I mean when I say put yourself in the driver's seat because the minute that you're clear on the kind of work you want to do and who your dream client is, then knowing exactly what to post to Instagram becomes so second nature because it becomes so obvious of, huh, all I have to do is show up and literally show my clients the kind of work that I want to be asked to create. And then they will actually find you and be like, hey, I saw that thing that you posted on April 14th. Could you make me one? It really gets to be that simple. And then the last thing to really focus in on is remembering that your premium clients and those customers that are going to pay $200, $300, $400 dollars for an order, they want a professional experience from start to finish. So that means that the process of going from their first touch point with you, whether that's calling you, sending a DM, sending you an email, or landing on your website, that very first touch point all the way through to the moment that you send them the delivery confirmation, I want you to push for the highest level of professionalism you can possibly imagine. I want you to envision that you're like working in an account office or medical center. That level of professionalism with, will win your clients over so quickly. So this might mean automating
automating some parts of the process so that there isn't any sort of delay in waiting for the human to open up the shop or the human to answer the phone, as well as taking the time for yourself to think through, okay, what is your ideal scenario that you want a $300 customer order to go through? How are they going to find out about you? What's their first touch point with you? How quickly can you get them to go through your online catalog and to the checkout process? What do you want their payment confirmation experience to look like? What do you want that delivery confirmation to look like? Thinking through every single piece of the puzzle, knowing there's always going to be room for improvement. So we're never going to let our perfectionist tendencies stand in the way, but really putting yourself in your customer's shoes and going, okay, well, how simple and easy can I make this? Because that ease of ordering, the simplicity of having somebody go through your online catalog are actually some of the intangible, valuable elements of your offer. If you go jump on a website from one of your favorite florists, no doubt their online shopping experience is going to be really dialed in and it's going to have been built off of like 10,000 tweaks and changes, iterations, updates, refreshes, overhauls, because there is this nature of constant improvement, constantly looking for ways that you can simplify and streamline things, but knowing that that's part of the fun. That is one of the reasons that running your own business is so empowering because you can wake up tomorrow, go in and completely revamp your online catalog, change the order of things, make sure that you've got six products in every one of your six feature catalogs in your online offering. Make sure you've got that price anchor product and that the experience from the moment that somebody finds out about you, maybe clicks on your Google ad to the time that they check out is seamless. It's easy to navigate and it makes it easy for them to spend $200, $300. So these are the six things that I want you to focus on right now when it comes to increasing your average order value as florist. And this is the exact process that got me out of the frustration and angst of feeling like everybody only ever wanted to spend 30 or $50 on a bouquet to be able to actually have an average order value of $150. Attracting clients who valued our expertise, our quality, and our ease of ordering. Attracting clients who regularly and consistently wanted to spend $150, $200, $300, $400 on an arrangement. And really remembering that at this moment in time, if you don't like the customers that are coming to your business, the best part is they are simply a reflection of the marketing that you're putting out into the world. So your customers are perfect and you are in complete control of how you market your business. So follow this six step plan and remember that you get to put yourself in the driver's seat. You get to decide who your business is in business to serve, the kind of work you're putting out into the world. And if you want to attract $150, $200 customers to your business, follow this process. And please also remember that it takes time. None of these things happen overnight. But if you stay focused on your vision, you stay committed to taking consistent aligned action, you are going to blow your mind with what you can accomplish in your business. And don't forget, if you want to fast track your way to making more money, increasing your profitability, come join me inside the Flower Box Formula. You get access to my six step blueprint to making money, attracting dream clients so that you can wake up to an inbox overflowing with new customer orders and dream inquiries. And as always, thank you so much for being here. If anything in this video was helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my flower family, be sure to hit that subscribe button and have the most amazing week and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.